Hey guys, so my friends and clients always ask me, what is the best exercise to get huge calves? There's not one exercise to get big calves. Having big calves is all about your lifestyle habits and a little bit of because of your genetics. And no, it's not 100% genetics like most people think. And I'll tell you why. I thought I would share my ideas with all of you since it shouldn't really be kept a secret. I see so many people doing the wrong things at the gym. Nobody wants to be the guy at the gym with chicken legs. There are three things that influence your lower leg development, all right? Muscles involved, gastrocnemius, soleus, tibialis anterior. Number two, Wolf's Law of Bone Adaptation. And number three, your body type. Uh, are you an apple, pear, or are you a brick shape? So that kind of involves genetics. So all three of these things contribute to your, to your lower leg size. So the first thing I need to explain is what muscles contribute to your lower leg. Your leg is made up of the tibialis anterior, gastrocnemius, and soleus muscles. All three of these muscles and your bones give your leg size. If you only train the gastroc and soleus muscles, which most people at the gym only do, you will never have that girth in your lower leg. So before you start working out, you need to know what muscles to even focus on. Here we go. Number one, gastrocnemius. It attaches to the femur and the calcaneus, which makes it a two joint muscle. It's responsible for plantar flexion and knee flexion. If you want to activate it, you need to do exercises that involve standing calf raises. While doing calf raises, I usually do the two in one rule. So it means one second up and two second hold at the top to get the blood flowing to your gastroc and soleus muscles. But keep in mind, standing calf raises will also activate the soleus muscle. The soleus attaches to the tibia and the fibula all the way down to the calcaneus, making it a one joint muscle. It also is responsible for plantar flexion, just like the gastroc, but the only difference is you can isolate it. All you would have to do is work out your calves with your knees bent in 90 degrees, usually in a sitting down position. By standing up and doing calf raises, you will activate both the soleus and the gastrocnemius. This exercise isolates your soleus muscle. You can clearly see the separation between my gastroc muscle and soleus muscle in the video right now. I do the two-in-one rule for this exercise as well. The tibialis anterior, which is in front of your lower leg, all right, it's on the opposite side of your uh, calf muscles, um, it attaches to the tibia and the border between your tibia and fibula all the way down to your first metatarsal bone in your ankle. The action of the tibia is dorsiflexion and inversion. These are different ways that I like, there are two different ways that I like to train my tibialis anterior and I feel like I get the best effects from these two exercises. Really try to get range of motion on these next two exercises. Try to focus on dorsiflexing your foot and everting it at the same time to the outside. The next thing that I want to explain is Wolf's Law of Bone Adaptation. All right, this is number two on the list. Bone also adds girth to your lower leg. It's not just the muscles. Wolf's Law is a theory developed by a German anatomist and surgeon Julius Wolf. This law states that bone in a healthy person or animal will adapt to the loads under which it is placed. What does this mean? If the load on your bone increases, your bone will remodel itself over time to become stronger to resist that sort of loading. How is it going to remodel itself? Usually this means that the bone will become thicker. What does that mean for your lower leg? Your bones will be thicker, stronger, and capable of handling larger forces. Handling larger forces usually means higher ability to generate power, which means the muscles around that bone need to be stronger. And there's an old saying for this situation. With strength comes size, and also you can say the reverse. With size comes strength. That being said, what types of activities help add bone density to your lower leg? Studies found that duration, how much time you spend on your lower legs, magnitude, how much force is going through your legs, and rate of loading, how often do you put those heavy loads through your leg, are all necessary to create bone remodeling and formation. How does that all translate? How does all that translate to the real world? All right. Um, let's say, for example, you're hiking in the mountains, which involves you spending more of your day, most of your day, walking and putting loads to your legs. 
training with a weighted vest, which adds extra weight to your body frame. Walking up and down the stairs with a heavy backpack, again, that puts extra weight on your body frame, which significantly loads your legs. Standing on your feet all day, blood will be circulating in your legs more than, you, more than it would if you were sitting at a desk. Being overweight, yes, being overweight will actually help you get bigger calves since you have more weight going through them on a day-to-day -day basis. Playing sports on grass. This basically works your tibialis anterior like crazy um, because the grass provides resistance and the primary action of the tibialis anterior is dorsiflexion. So you're picking that foot up off the ground and it's kind of like you're doing reps. You know, if you're playing a soccer game, that's probably like 2,000, 3,000 tibialis anterior uh, contractions per match, all right, or more. Um, let's say another example is doing your leg workouts until failure, all right? You want to tire out the muscle completely. You want to get it hypertrophic. Um, unless you do that every time during your workouts, it's not going to grow. Um, all these examples are mostly about your lifestyle. It all comes down to how much time you spend on your legs per day, how much load you are putting through those legs. People think this is all up to genetics, all right? But it's not. And don't give up on training your legs, all right? Uh, don't give up on your lifestyle. You, you just gotta change it. It's not just based on your genetics. Your genetics can only determine your starting bone density and muscle insertions, meaning that you might have a higher or lower insertion than your friend. Your calf might start higher rather than lower, which will influence the overall shape of your muscle. But as for gaining size and muscle in your gastroc soleus or tib anterior, it's all fair game for everyone. There's no, there's no winners and losers. Everyone is perfectly capable of putting on size in their lower legs. It's just how far you are willing to go to get it. The third thing that's important before you begin working out is determining your body type, which is basically a reflection of your genetics. Most people fall into three different categories. Uh, the first one's an apple shape, which means you have most of your fat around your midsection. Next one's a pear shape, which means you have most of your fat in your lower extremities and sometimes even thicker bones in those areas. A brick shape, which means your fat distribution is pretty even all over your body. People that have a pear shape will have the easiest time in gaining, muscle, in gaining size in their lower legs since most of their fat tissue is located in their lower extremities. Fat distribution can usually give a good estimation of which areas in your body are capable of the most muscular growth. If you have an apple shape and you're trying to grow your lower leg, including muscles and bone, you will definitely need to be taking in a lot more calories than someone with the same weight and height in order to get the same results as someone who has a pear-shaped body. What influences whether someone has a certain body type over another? Genetics, number one, is the obvious answer, but I, but I like to think of it more as your lifestyle. So your parents' lifestyle, your grandparents' lifestyle, and so on, which led to your genetics being as they are. Did your parents and grandparents live a sedentary lifestyle? Were they not required to carry heavy loads through their legs? Did they work an office job? Did they sit at a desk for most of their life? Did they have slim figures, meaning that did they have lighter skeletons with thinner bones? You know, that's going to lead you to having a skinny frame. You know, if, you, if all your parents and grandparents had, you know, lower bone densities. So now I bet you want to know my recommendations uh, for bigger calves. Um, so we got to remember that bones contribute to your lower leg, muscles contribute to your lower leg, and a little bit of genetics contribute to how, where the fat stored. Um, so recommendation number one. The muscles that give your lower leg more size are gastroc, soleus, and tib anterior. All right? Gastrocnemius is a fast twitch muscle, which means you have to train like one. It's fast twitch muscles versus slow twitch muscles if you don't know what that is. Fast twitch basically are for you know, explosive power, uh, you know, they're definitely not endurance or long, long uh, duration activities. It's for, I would say, maybe 10 to 20 second activities, while slow twitch fibers are for long distance running, doing something for a longer period of time. So gastroc, once again, is a fast twitch muscle, so you have to train it like one. It's a two joint muscle, so you need to perform exercise in a standing position to activate it. Standing calf raises is a good example of an exercise that works to gastroc. 
The next muscle, the soleus, is a slow twitch muscle and it usually gets them the most effective workout from activities involving carrying heavy loads for longer amounts of time and an example of that could be hiking, going up and down the stairs to a heavy backpack. It's a one joint muscle. It's a one joint muscle, so if you want to isolate it at the gym, you need to be doing sitting down exercises. So sitting down calf raises, knees 90 degrees to take the gastroc out of the picture. Last muscle, tibialis anterior. It's the most neglected muscle and it helps add a lot of shape to your lower leg. It's a slow twitch muscle. Any sports activities in the grass help develop this muscle the most because as you pick up your foot, dorsiflexing, the, the grass adds resistance. If you're running around for over an hour, like I mentioned earlier, during a soccer match, imagine how many reps that is on your tib anterior. You can also work out your, uh, uh, your tibialis anterior at the gym and I will demonstrate how. Recommendation number two is based on Wolf's Law of Bone Adaptation. First thing is, stay on your feet. Avoid sitting for prolonged periods of time. Hiking uh, is number two. Uh, try to do a lot of hiking when you're young. Uh, stay on your feet when you're young. Um, first, I would say 30 years of your life are the most important for uh, lower leg development uh, since you have the most hormones. Uh, play sports that involve loading your legs, hockey, soccer, football, etc. All these sports, you, have, you carry around loads, you're loading your legs constantly and consistently, usually until failure. Uh, and I don't know if this one will help, but this is just my recommendation. Uh, try walking around or doing your workouts with a weighted vest. You know, I, I have a 10 pound, 20 pound uh, weighted vest that I use to run sometimes. And I definitely feel a huge difference um, uh, in my calves getting activated after my workouts when I wear that vest. Um, last recommendation for uh, Wolf's Law, uh, avoid wearing shoes that give you too much cushion during your runs. Uh, a shoe that has a lot of cushion is going to promote heel striking. Um, when you strike with your heel, uh, the cushion takes a lot of the force away from your foot and you know people think it's good because it doesn't do that much damage to your knees but in reality before we had shoes people ran barefoot and they struck the ground with their forefoot um, they never did heel strikes because that would just destroy your knees uh, if you didn't have shoes on take it easy in the beginning uh, while you're transitioning from heel strike to forefoot strike a good shoe to get is a five finger shoe. Um, I, Vibram, I think, makes them. Uh, but take it easy, like I said, because you could get tendonitis in your Achilles tendon uh, during that first week. Trust me, personal experience, I overdid it, but my calves were sore for, I would say, about a week um, after my first experience of four foot running. Uh, so try that out, it's gonna activate your calves a lot more, so gastroc, soleus, you're going to feel it uh, big time during that week. Um, the last thing is in terms of your body type. If you're not a pair, you're going to definitely have a harder time putting on muscle in your legs. But it's not impossible, so don't give up. Either way, you need a proper diet and if you want to put on muscle. You want to, if you want to find more information about how to diet, um, you can go on my website, healthytips.com with a Z. Um, check it out. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. Um, and I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Um, maybe give you some new ideas.